sanctification of the saints. What he worries about is the expansion and the establishment of the kingdom of God. What he worries about, he doesn't worry about hospitality, you know, going around and uh, throwing a party there, religious party there, another party over there. And people are in that church, it's wonderful. They just feed up and they give clothes to the naked and give food to the, to the hungry. Satan doesn't bother about that, but he bothers about holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. That's why it says, wherefore we would have come unto you. Even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. But thank God we're going to overcome. I said we're going to overcome. That's why we're talking about turning Satan's hindrances to greater soul harvesting. Turning Satan's hindrances to greater soul harvesting. What if I did the study tonight to three parts? Number one, overcoming hindrances through suitable substitutes. Suitable substitutes. Number two, obtaining help through the saints' supplication. The saints' supplication. Number three, optimum harvest. Great harvest. Best harvest. Desirable harvest through sustainable strategies. Number one, overcoming hindrances through suitable substitutes. Let's come back to Paul's Thessalonians Chapter 2, verse 18. Wherefore, we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again. But Satan hindered us. Is that the end of the story? Does that mean because Satan hindered and he closed one door, it means that we're not going to look up, open our eyes wide and see all the other possibilities, all the other open doors. Here we find that Paul the Apostle, he made use of suitable substitutes. When we talk of suitable substitutes, that means there are other people that can do the same thing. And we find this all over the scripture, all over the scripture, that when a leader is not able to do something, maybe he's hindered because of circumstances, because of situations, because of opposition, because of persecution, because they're looking for just that one, and they want to hinder just that leader because he's a champion in the army of the Lord. And then that leader, that champion, that apostle, that prophet, that, that evangelist, will then create the situation whereby the other people who are not being targeted, how they can get the work done. Let's come back to First Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. Wherefore, when we could no longer forbear, that is, we who would have come, but Satan hindered us, and we couldn't come. When we could no longer forbear, we thought each good to be left in Athens alone, and sent Timotheus, our brother, a minister of God, our fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ to establish you and to comfort you concerning your faith. He said, we had a substitute. And it was a suitable substitute. Always remember that. That if you want to get something done, it's the preaching of the gospel, the salvation of souls, visiting them again, doing the follow-up. And then you're not able to do that. Look for a suitable substitute. We're looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17. A suitable substitute for this cause have I sent unto you, Timotheus. Corinthians, I know the need is there. I know you want to see me. I know that I should be there, but now there's no opportunity now. I'm sending a suitable substitute unto you. And what a wonderful thing that we as a church, we should learn that if a Paul is not able to get to us, if the state of us is not able to get to us, if the region of us is not able to get to us, if a group coordinator is not able to get to us, there may be suitable substitute. They were saying, and they were still doing the same thing. They still preach the name of Christ. They still and, and they still exalt Christ, and they're still going to call people to know the Lord. And if they pray the name of Jesus, Jesus is still going to answer that prayer. And therefore, we understand it's not every time Paul the Apostle will be there. It's not every time Peter will be there. It's not every time the region of a cell will be there. Sometimes it's a suitable substitute. And when they come, you receive them, you accept them, and you receive the message, and the Lord will bless all of us in Jesus' name. Verse 17, for this cause, have I sent unto you Timotheus, 
who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, and who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways which be in Christ as I teach everywhere in every church. It says Timothy is coming. It's a suitable substitute and it's going to bring to you all my ways in the Lord. We're looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 16. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 16. But thanks be to God, which puts the same earnest care into the heart of Titus for you. It says that Paul the Apostle was telling the Corinthians, you know, it's not only myself and it's not only Timothy, it's another man. It's my son in the faith tomb. And he is also a suitable substitute. And thank God, before I even spoke to him, the Lord put this in his heart. Look at verse 18. And we have sent with him the brother. There's another one that is not even named here. I've sent Titus and I've sent another brother along with him whose praise is in the gospel throughout all the churches. He said, the people I'm sending to you, they're suitable, and they're capable, and they're competent, and they will preach the same word unto you. Just let us remember that whenever Paul is not there, there's a Titus around, there's a Timothy around, and they are going to preach the same thing. And what's important is the word. What's important is the Savior. What's important is Christ. What's important is the Holy Spirit. And what's important is the doctrine they are going to emphasize. And they're going to say the same thing as I'm going to say. Look at verse 23. Whether any do inquire of titles, he is my partner and fellow helper concerning you. Corinthians, you understand? That yes, I know I want to be there. I've told you before that I'm your father. And I've told you before that you may have 1,000, 10,000 teachers. But you only have one father. But yet, those 10,000 teachers, are you not going to listen to them? They cite us a partner and a fellow helper concerning you. And or our brethren be inquired of. They are the messengers of the churches and of the glory of Christ. We're looking at Philip Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 21. It says, For which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak, but that she also may know my affairs and how I do. Tychicus, a beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord, shall make known to you all things. And you see what Paul the Apostle is saying? He's saying, the field is very wide, and it's wide for harvest, and I cannot be everywhere at the same time. And because of the limitation of time, and because of the limitation of opportunity, I can send Timothy, I can send Titus, I can even send Tychicus, and he's a faithful minister to you, and a beloved brother. He will make known all things unto you, but so unto you whom I have sent unto you for the same purpose that she might know our fears, and that he might, uh, that he might comfort your heart. We learn then that when things are so tough, or maybe things are so tight, that Paul the Apostle cannot be there, we're going to receive and we're going to benefit from the ministry of these suitable substitutes. We're looking at Colossians chapter 4, verse 7. Colossians chapter 4, verse 7. Here Paul the Apostle is telling us now about another privilege that, that we have. We're looking at chapter 4 verse 7. All my stay shall take us declare unto you. Who is a beloved brother and a faithful minister and a fellow servant in the Lord. And we're, we're learning a lot of lessons from this. Number one, that wherever Timothy was pastoring, we must not uh, say, well, Timothy is here, therefore Paul, leave him alone. Don't touch him. Don't send him anywhere. We love him, we accept him, we benefit from his ministry, and you disorganize things, the administration of the church, uh, Paul, when you send Timothy, anywhere you want to go, go there yourself. Well, Paul, the apostle said, I cannot go everywhere myself. In fact, there are places I want to go, but Satan hindered us. And because of that hindrance, I'm taking Timothy out of that place, and I'm going to tell Timothy, go to this other place. And surprisingly, Timothy came back from that place. And Paul the Apostle said to uh, Timothy, there's another place I'm sending you to. And would you know that Timothy was a pastor, a resident pastor 
in another place at this time when Paul the Apostle was sending him to Thessalonica, sending him to Corinth, and sending him to all these other places. It's not the people that are idle will pick up and send somewhere. It's not the people that have nothing doing will pick up and send somewhere. It's the people who are busy already, like Timothy. It's people that are busy already, like Titus. Look at First Timothy chapter 1 verse 3. First Timothy chapter 1 verse 3. As I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus, when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine. Timothy was not jobless, was not idle, was not that free. And yet Paul the apostle said, hey, come on, Timothy. I ought to go to Eternica, but I cannot go now. I leave that Ephesus and go there. Another time, uh, Timothy, that's enough. Now you've done enough in, in Eternica. I want you to go to Corinth. And you were already about Titus. Do you remember Titus? Titus chapter 1. I'm reading Titus chapter 1 in verse 5. For this cause, let I be Titus in Crete, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting, and ordain elders in every city as I appointed, as I had appointed thee. Titus too was not jobless. Titus was not idle. Titus had something doing. But Paul the Apostle said, Titus, I need you in Corinth too. And then he sent him to Corinth. And we're read about Tychicus. And Tychicus was mentioned, the mention of Tychicus in, in Ephesus. And now as we come to, as we come to another place again, Colossians chapter 4, we find Tychicus again. And Paul the Apostle saying, I want to send you here. Now Paul the Apostle, can we ask you a question? Are there not other people? Or don't you leave this Timothy in Ephesus where he is? And leave Titus in Crete where he is? And leave Tychicus in the place where he is, where you are putting him? Or are you sending these people? Can't you find other people? It says these are the suitable substitutes. And the beauty of each in the New Testament is that we never found any complaint. Never, never any complaint from all those churches where Timothy was taken and sent out to another place. There was no complaint in the place where Titus was and sent to another place. And there was no complaint in where Tychicus was and sent to another place. I pray that all these things that we learn will become practical knowledge for us in Jesus' name. Number one, that for example, when I'm supposed to be somewhere and I'm not able to go there, that people are not going to complain and they're not going to say, why is it, and, you know, the pastor is not coming to us. And when we say somebody, then you close your eyes and close your Bible and then turn the other way and say, I'm not going to listen. When the pastor, when the GS comes himself, that's when I'm going to listen. Hey, that's a wrong attitude. The other thing we need to take care of is that, let's say there's a Timothy and he's doing a great job in Ephesus. There's a Tychicus, he's doing a great job in another place. And then there's a Titus, he's doing a great job in, uh, in Crete. And then the chair says, uh, now Titus, I need to, for you to go over here. That nobody is complaining, nobody is grumbling. Why is it all they say, well, you understand, I travel around myself. I go to places myself. And when the work becomes so expansive and so great that I cannot go everywhere, we have the Timothys there, we have the Tituses there, we have the Tychicus there. And we're going to send them. And when they are sent, anywhere they are sent to, thank God they are going to be obedient in Jesus' name. And as they are obedient to the word of the Lord, I pray that our people that they are going to will benefit and get the word from them in Jesus' name. We're looking at 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men. He said, Timothy, as I've trained you and trained Titus and trained Tychicus and trained uh, all the other people, Aquila, Priscilla, everybody, you too train other people so that when the work expands and when the work is established and when you need to send other people to you to go and represent you and when you're looking for suitable substitutes, you'll be able to find people to pick on. We're saying the same thing to our state of Assyria's trained people. We're saying the same thing to the region of Assyria's trained people. I'm sure you are not waiting until we announce national workers' training, until we announce national or international workers' retreat, before you have workers' training in your region, workers' training in your state, workers', you know, workers training in your, in, your, in your nation, that, okay, we're still waiting. Why are you waiting? Timothy also was to train the workers, as Paul had trained the people. All the two people are not waiting in the various groups. We're waiting until the guests will announce this and announce this. Why does they have to do that? There you are. 
do something all those weekends are there get the time out and train the workers so that when we need suitable substitutes we'll be able to pick them up and send them there and this work will keep on expanding and expanding in jesus name chapter 2 verse 2 again second timothy and it says that thou art side of me among many witnesses the same the same don't change the doctrine train or the same doctrine emphasize the same doctrine emphasize the same christian life the same holiness the same sanctification don't omit anything the same commit that to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also now before i leave that point i want to remind you that timothy or titus or tychicus or aquila or priscilla or any of these other people they were fast a suitable substitute what i mean by fast f they were faithful a, they were available. S, they were steadfast. T, they were teachable. These people that were sent out, that could go and reach out to other people, teach other people, one, yes, they were fast. Fast in the sense that they obeyed promptly. They obeyed immediately. They were fast. In the sense that the moment they were told to go that week, they were already there. They were fast. But then as you spell that out, faithful. And that's what Paul the Apostle said about Timothy. That's what he said about Titus. They were faithful men, faithful women. And then that's what we're saying about the people today. Suitable substitutes. The Jesus is to go somewhere. He's not able to go. He's sending you. Be fast. Be faithful. And then be available. Timothy was available. Titus available. Tychicus was available. All these people that Paul the Apostle sent out, they were available. He didn't say, I'm sorry, Paul. I'm tired now. You know, I just came back from Tesnaika, and now I'm going to go to Corinth, and then I'm going to go to all this place. You know, Pastor, let's consider this scene. When somebody is shifting and moving about, today is Ephesus, tomorrow is Corinth, and the other day is Tesnaika. You know, a kind of a person shifting, uh, there's no time to settle down. Can I settle down for some time? They were available. Then they were steadfast, and they just kept on doing what they ought to do, or movable in the work of the Lord, knowing that their work was going to be rewarded. That's what we read about in First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, or movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Steadfast they were, and then teachable they were. Teachable, everything Paul the Apostle taught them, they went to teach the other people to num point number two now, obtaining help through the same supplication. Obtaining help through the same supplication. I'm coming back to First Thessalonians chapter 2. First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 18. Wherefore, we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. Uh, there's something we find out about Paul the Apostle. He knew his duty. He knew his responsibility. And he knew that physically he should go to all those places, but then there were hindrances. Do you know one thing that Paul the Apostle did? He prayed. Supplication. Supplication. The same supplication. Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 2. We give thanks to God always for, for you all, making mention of you in our prayers. Making mention of you in our prayers. He knew that if he couldn't go to preach, he could pray, always praying for them. He wanted to reach out to them and he could.